Hey guys, Carolyn here. Today I am going to be talking about a topic that I have wanted to talk about for literally so long and it is the thought of standing groups pre-debut. Now, when I first got into K-pop, this wasn't really a thing in 2009. It was a long time ago. And I am a K-pop grandmother. Hello, welcome. I got into K-pop in 2009 and it wasn't really a thing to know groups pre-debut, but obviously these days with elimination programs and pre-debut programs being almost required when it comes to releasing a new group, there are a lot of people who stand groups before they've even dropped their first single. So today I want to talk about it a little bit and why I think that that is just a bad idea, especially if you are a collector. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is that personalities don't really equal everything a K-pop group has to offer. There are a lot of people who really watch, really like elimination programs, and I don't know why you like elimination programs, but you do. I'm afraid of them. But there are a lot of people who really like elimination programs. There are a lot of people who watch a ton of pre-debut shows, and they think, oh, this group has this member from the elimination program in it. I'm definitely going to stay in 100%. Here's why that is a bad idea. First of all, if you if we're talking about Produce 101 Season 2, if you are standing a boy group that came from Produce 101 Season 2 that's not 101, I feel like you don't really under, like have an idea of what to expect from a group and their style. So you could absolutely love this human being and want to stand them, but their group could release like ballad music and you're more into hip hop music and so you pre-order this album to support your fave which for some of my faves I will do like um some really really high up faves I will do but for the most part if there's a person from an elimination program that I'm like oh okay I'll wait for the song to come out before buying the album because I'm literally just afraid that I'm just going to hate it because it's happened to me time and time again not recently but a few years ago I got into a group that I thought was going to release one sort of type of music when they debuted and they ended up releasing a completely different kind of music and I was just overall really disappointed and I had this album and I said that I was going to Stan and <laughs> I feel like it's just really hard to stay in a group that way because you literally have no idea what to expect from said group. A good example of this would be TXT and everyone keeps asking me if I'm going to Stan. I literally like just like looked at the boys faces like I literally can't you can't stand from faces I mean you can but it's not really a good idea because you don't have any idea of what kind of music they're going to release also if you're a company stan it's really hard to know what kind of music is going to come out of favorite company's new boy group because say for Jellyfish Entertainment um, I was interested in Very Very because they are from Jellyfish and I also I really like Vix and I really like Gugudon so I was like oh I'll check out Very Very when they debut Very Very's music is so different from Gugudon and Vix's music, so you can't really look at a group and say, I'm gonna stand them because they're from my favorite company. I feel like NCT, so SM is kind of weird because a lot of SM's music does really sound similar. Um, not entirely anymore, but when NCT first debuted, I thought that their sound was kind of similar to EXO's. Um, at the time, not really anymore. I think both groups have their very own distinct sound now, but uh, but I guess that's okay if you like EXO and you got into NCT pretty early. But yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of people hopping on the TXT train and a lot of other people being like, what are you even standing? Like, you're standing their faces, which I think is completely fair because yes, I think that visuals and looks and personalities are a big part of K-pop, but I feel like the music is like 75% of it and personality is like 25% of it. Maybe it's more like 60, 60, 40 or something like that. But I feel like music is a huge part of a K-pop group. And unless this group has released songs, say like YG's new boy group Treasure, they released a single that is for Treasure on their show. So you kind of have an idea of what Treasure's music might sound like. Maybe what one of their B-sides will sound like. Not really what their music as a whole is gonna sound like. Like they could release a song like Dumb and Dumber for all we know by Icon. Like they could release that kind of song and then have that as a B-side. Does that make a lot of sense? No, but not a lot of what YG does makes a lot of sense. So you know, oh, forever so bitter over YG. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just really, I just really feel like if you're going to stand a group pre-debut that 
I hope you're not a collector because don't pre-order that album. You have no idea what to expect from that album. There are times where you will stand a group pre-debut and their music will completely meet your expectations and you'll be so excited. And that's great when that happens, but I feel like that doesn't always happen. And I saw this the most with Luna. Luna were kind of different because they had such a long pre-debut period where they released all 12 members individually and three different subunits and then released Luna. So I feel like Luna stands were waiting for a long time not really knowing what kind of music Luna was going to create and there's some music that's come out of Luna that I'm like really not a fan of and there's some music I really really liked that came out of Luna but all of the music was so different that I was like what are they gonna do when they're all together all 12 of them are together I'm very excited because I was very pleasantly surprised it was one of those things where I pre-ordered the album not really sure what to expect, but kind of just hoping it all worked out. Um, and I was very pleasantly surprised. That album, Luna's XX album, or Plus Plus album rather, XX isn't out yet. Um, Plus Plus was one of my favorite albums of last year, so I was very pleasantly surprised. But I just as easily saw as many people be completely disappointed in the album. So, yeah. It's just my two cents, especially with all of these boy groups and all of these girl groups that are coming out this year. If you're interested in a new group, that's great. I think it's really good to have a sort of fan base before debut, but I'm just saying don't get too invested because they may disappoint you. Or they may disappoint you for the debut era and then maybe later on you will really get into them and you'll like their music a lot more. Um, an example of this with me is Astro and Vix. When Vix debuted, I like really didn't like their debut. I think it was their third single that I really got into Vix. Um, but before that, I was like, no. And Astro, I thought I was going to love them. And Boyfriend, I thought I was going to love their debuts. I hated both their debuts. <laughs> and later on, they did release more music that I really enjoy. So I did get more into them, but doesn't always happen right away that you're going to absolutely adore a group. If you hear the album preview and you hear the music video teaser um, and you say, oh, I really think this is going to be good for me, I would still wait, but I think that you have a more accurate idea of what this group is going to offer and what they're going to be like. You can only tell so much from dance covers and practices because that's not the group, it's a different group that that group is covering. So you can't really tell. Some things that I forgot to say while I was um, filming this video is obviously I'm not putting down anyone who goes and does this. I'm just saying from my personal experiences, this is not something I would recommend doing. Also, um, as far as like produce idols go and stuff, when you follow your fave into their favorite group, like anyone from Produce 48 or Produce 101, either one, um, or any of those elimination programs, obviously it is a great idea to support your fave, especially if they don't end up debuting in the group that was made from the show, because a lot of times, that support is what gets a lot of groups off the ground and gets them more well known and gets them food on their table and being able to pay rent and all that stuff um so I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't do that I definitely think that that's a great idea but I'm just saying it's more for the people who just jump on groups without really knowing what to expect but I wouldn't do that for every single group especially if you collect and I wouldn't really call that standing I would just call that like being excited for them and anticipating their debut and just supporting them I wouldn't say that you are a stan quite yet because I think that's a term that a lot of people use super lightly in k-pop and that's kind of my main issue but yeah I just wanted to add that in so yes this is it thanks for watching have a great day okay bye <laughs> But yeah, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section down below. And if you've ever stand a group pre-debut before any music or anything and whether or not it worked out for you, if you really like that group now, or if you decided this group isn't really for me, but maybe you'll like them later on, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, as always, if you have any other rant videos you would like me to talk about, go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below as well. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye!